A college education was once considered the ticket to a successful life. But over the past decade, that sentiment has taken a sharp left turn. The debate about the cost and value of higher education today is important. From students wondering if higher education is worth the price, if it's going to prepare them for the real world, if it's for them or if even they can cut it, to people in the workforce trying to say, why don't you give us better graduates who can actually do the things they're supposed to be able to do? To People who are educators, who work in higher education, who are constantly trying to justify the value of what they offer to today's workforce and world. Back in 2015, nearly 60% of Americans were very confident in higher education. But between then and now, confidence has dropped significantly. Now just 36% of Americans say they're confident in getting an education beyond high school. And the negativity does not stop there. In 2015, less than 10% of Americans gave higher education a failing grade. But that number has more than doubled, with 22% saying they have very little confidence in college. So let's look at the numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the Census Bureau to see whether or not you should go to college. Hi, I'm James Callahan, and this is The Do-Over Show, and I've spent my career with one foot in the workforce world and the other foot in higher education, teaching and, and consulting to higher education institutions about the quality of education that we're actually offering in higher education today. And it's become more and more obvious as the years go on that people think higher education is failing us. So when people wonder, is college still worth it? Uh, financially speaking, as you said, in terms of income, it still is. Uh, controlling for a generation, controlling for race and ethnicity. It seems like for whites, for example, uh, college four-year graduate has about 43% more income than they uh, a non-graduate would. So what are the numbers today? Let's actually get beyond all the hyperbole and all the arguments and let's look at the numbers today and see what we can learn about college. Should you go? What should you expect? And what the outcomes you will hope to accomplish, what they might be. And the history of the Bureau of Labor Statistics arguments is that, well, it's always, it always pays. There's always more money in a life if you get a college degree. No matter what you major in, you'll always make more money than someone who has just some college. You'll make some more money than someone who has an associate's degree, and you'll make more money than someone who has a high school diploma. Yes, education pays according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and there is no foreseeable change in that trend today. Now, there are five career paths that tend to pay more over the lifetime than any other career paths. And that is assuming that you can get hired, even if you don't have a college degree, that you can get hired in one of these five, you'll tend to make more money over your working career than just about anybody else. The five categories that pay more are medicine, law, sales, IT, and just about anything or everything that has the title engineering in it. And before you say, ooh, sales, that doesn't require an education, the highest paying career in sales usually involves leveraging something like IT or engineering in order to make a living as a salesperson in that field. They don't hire you just because you can talk to people. You have to actually know what it is you're selling. Now, who actually goes to college these days? Most of us assume, well, it's just rich white kids, privileged kids who just have the money and they just do it for four more years. Well, that's right in terms of the total number because the majority population in the U.S. is predominantly white, but the actual number and percentages of those accepted and attending higher education are exactly the opposite. And with DEI becoming more and more part of acceptance rates at more and more colleges and universities, it's important to actually know the numbers, especially if you're part of a minority population and you have the assumption that rich white kids go to school and get into school and that you don't have a chance. Actually, that's not the reality today. And you have a significant turn in your favor happening in higher education. Okay, now when we drill down into the numbers, here's a recent report, very recent, hot off the press by the Census Bureau about new educational attainment data. And according to the Census Bureau, here are the numbers. First, by age. In 2022, the highest level of education of the population age 25 and older in the U.S. ranged from less than a high school degree to advanced degrees beyond a master's degree. 9% had less than a high school diploma or equivalent, a GED. 28% had a high school as their highest level of school completed. 15% had completed some college but not a degree. 10% had an associate's degree. 23% had a bachelor's degree as their highest degree. And 14% had completed advanced education such as a master's degree, professional degree, or doctorate. 
That means that just 37% of U.S. population age 25 and older had gone to college or gone to grad school. So a little more than one out of three. So the majority of people are not going to college and going to grad school. In fact, less than one quarter of the U.S. population has a bachelor's degree. Now let's look at it by sex. According to the Census Bureau in 2022, 30.1% of men aged 25 and older had completed a high school diploma or GED as their highest level of attainment compared to 27% of women. In 2022, 39% of women aged 25 and older and 36.2% of men in the same age range had completed a bachelor's degree or more as their highest level of educational attainment. And that's the trend. More women than men are involved in higher education. And those women tend to associate with men who have a degree in higher education. It's sort of like eHarmony except with colleges and universities. Now let's look at it by race. And this is where we get the reality check on who actually is pursuing higher education, who gets in and who succeeds. So the youngest generation, they are the most demographically diverse uh, in terms of race and ethnicity. Uh, compared to other older generations, right? So if Black and uh, Latino students are not as likely as white students to go to college and to graduate from college, then we'll see what we're seeing now, which is um, lowering college uh, going for these younger generations. According to the Census Bureau, from 2012 to 2022, the percentage of adults aged 25 and older who had completed high school increased for all race and Hispanic origin groups. In, during this period, high school completion increased from 92.5% to 95.2% for non-Hispanic white population, from 85 to 90.1% for the black population, from 88.9 to 92.3% for the Asian population, and from 65 to 75.2% for the Hispanic population. From 2012 through 2022, the percentages of adults aged 25 and older with a bachelor's degree or more increased from 34.5 to 41.8% for non-Hispanic white population, from 21.2 to 27.6 for the black population, and from 51 to 59.3% for the Asian population, and from 14.5% to 20.9% for the Hispanic population, the most significant growth development in those who attained a bachelor's degree or higher education. So what do the numbers actually tell us? Well, they don't tell us anything. We've got to read and interpret the numbers and figure out where we are. Now, if you're in one of the minority groups that's encouraged to pursue higher education, or if you're in the first generation, you're the first person in your family that has the opportunity of pursuing higher education, you have a big burden and it feels heavy, but you also have to ask the question about whether or not education, higher education, is not just a trophy that you're looking at, an aspirational trophy, or whether it's something that you actually want to pursue. Remember, you can find a college or university that will accept you, that have 100% acceptance rates. Don't confuse that with the question of whether or not you really want to or should pursue it. Now, when you actually look at the numbers, when we drill down and we look at the numbers, here are the things to keep in mind. First, if you're considering college, then you need to get into college you can afford. And the higher your family's household income, the more you'll have to pay. So for you, college might be a privilege associated with income. So some people might wonder about Gen Zs, right? The actual youngest adult generation now. And what we find there is for those that have gone and gotten a college degree, a four-year college degree, not that many, uh, not as many as you might expect. Only 63% say that it is worth it. Um, so that's not that much, even if you have a college degree, right? right? Financially speaking. But on the flip side, the ones that are really hurting are those that went to college, probably took out some debt and didn't get that four-year degree. They dropped out. Only one in five of them say that the, the financial gains or benefits outweigh the costs. But also, the lower your grades, the lower your acceptance rate at schools that actually reject applicants. Yeah, even though you have money, they might reject you because you just don't have the performance history to indicate that you will be successful. And one of the things colleges and universities don't want is for you to start, for them to cash your check, and then for you to say, no, college is not for me. 
The dropout rates for higher education are significant because the acceptance rates in higher education are significant. So in some areas, in some groups, especially for certain demographics, the dropout rates are more than 50%. You start, you pay, but then you accumulate student debt and you say, I just can't cut it. Maybe you can't do the work, maybe you don't wanna do the work, and then you end up stuck with a bill that you have to pay off, hopefully, maybe, maybe not, in, depending on student loan forgiveness, and you don't have anything but some college on your resume. The next question is what kind of major you want to pursue and how many times you're going to change your major in higher education. It's alarming, but in some colleges and universities, more than 50% of the student body changes their major. They enter with one idea and they either bomb, that is they can't perform in that area, they go from a hard skill to a soft skill major, or they decide that they've just chosen a different career path, or maybe the career that they thought was going to be realistic for them just isn't because the career evaporates, or maybe they're excited by something. Often they take a class from a really cool prof and they say, ooh, that's what I wanna do, and they change their major, which means their four-year degree becomes a five-year degree, or even a six-year degree, which is becoming more common at certain schools and that is expensive. So where are you in all these numbers? What are the factors that you're using to evaluate whether or not you should pursue higher education? Or if you're on the giving advice side of this, maybe as a parent or guardian, or you're in higher education, or you're a high school counselor, what are your defaults? What are you looking at when you offer the advice to students that they should pursue a course in higher education? Hey, and thanks for being part of the do-over show. Please, could you tap the like button because that's my acceptance rate. And while you're down there, how about you subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. I'm so glad you found me and I found you. Thanks.